Hi guys, it's Regan and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. It's currently Tuesday afternoon. It is so gloomy outside. Matilda is snoring. She's down there. Um, but this week I am planning to do hopefully a lot of reading and I'm honestly so looking forward to reading both of the books on my TBR. They're both epic fantasy, one of which I feel like has been a long time coming. So without further ado, without further delay, let's chat about the books I hope to read for the course of this reading vlog. So first and foremost, and the first part of this vlog is going to be me finishing up The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwen. I am exactly 300 pages into this book and it's just under 500 pages, I want to say. So I have about 200 pages left of this and I am really enjoying this. This book is absolutely gruesome. Some, um dark it's kind of like a norse mythology gods have been destroyed this sort of like viking-esque landscape multi-perspective following three different characters on their own paths of like vengeance and glory i'll talk more about this book in a bit once i actually pick it up to continue reading it but the first 300 pages have really intrigued me a lot of it is just kind of getting you situated in the world and with the characters but now where i'm at at least things are really starting to heat up and again gruesome 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 this book is dark and very violent but i'm really liking it and i'm looking forward to finishing it and anticipating the rest of the books within this series and then from there it's finally time for me to start oop rhythm of war by brandon sanderson i'm obviously not going to finish this book this vlog. I'm hoping to read a couple hundred pages and just start it at least. And then from there, I'll probably continue to feature it throughout the month of July. I just read John Shard about a week or so ago. So I am fully prepared, fully ready to go into this fourth installment. I'm like nervous. I'm also a little sad because I feel like I always had this book on my TBR. So I was like, oh, I always, I still have a Stormlight archive book to read, you know, but now once I finish this, I'm going to be waiting with the rest of the world. Um, that being said though, I can't wait. This is going to be so intense. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm going to be starting this this vlog as well. Those are the two books I plan to feature for this reading vlog. Definitely an epic fantasy time. It is, again, raining. I never change out of like loungewear today. I plan on just sticking around at the house for the next few days um, and trying to read as much as I can. So yeah, welcome to the start of this vlog. Watch me ignore my responsibilities and my need to like pack and stuff by reading instead so yeah hello a very adult lunch of chicken fingers and a bodega sandwich we're watching march comes like a lion ignore the utter disaster that is my apartment our air conditioning unit in our bedroom um needs some maintenance so we had to like move a bunch of stuff but anywho we're ignoring it and having lunch hi friends i'm finishing up my work day as we speak and I'm about to sit down and do some reading. I really want to read as much as possible of this tonight. Um, one, because I really want to jump into Rhythm of War, and also I'm just really liking this book, but I wanted to give a bit more context to what this story is about. I've already mentioned this is like a dark, gruesome, Norse mythology, multi-perspective story, but a little more about the actual setting. So this is set in like a very much like Viking-inspired land there's like small settlements controlled by powerful warriors and kind of their political influence um can be very small or very large depending on how powerful they are but there's definitely a bit of a change in the air in that there are certain people kind of vying for more power kind of transitioning to a more like monarchical system where they're trying to so you're kind of seeing that political struggle play out from these like small independent villages like kind of being forced to be under the protection of a new like monarch warrior that claims the region essentially and all of these different powerful people are also kind of going against each other outside of that the setting is just really intriguing basically gods once walked this land and they were incredibly powerful but they went to war with each other and destroyed each other and also destroyed the land itself. Now civilization has kind of grown in the shadow of the destruction of these gods and their power remains in a few ways. One, fantastical creatures kind of walk this land as well, kind of coming from the sort of ripped reality that the gods created. They're really dangerous and you kind of have to like fight them and also protect yourself from them. And there are these war bands that kind of make their living destroying and defeating these creatures, protecting areas for money and also kind of like selling the creatures 
scraps, you know, for money. Kind of think like fantasy game in a way. Um, outside of that though, you can also harness like the dead god's remains for power, like bones and stuff like that. And also there are these children of the gods, people who have bloodline that is tied back to the gods who kind of have otherworldly powers as well. And they're called the tainted and they are systematically like destroyed in society or try to be contained or controlled for the use of their power, but everyone generally is very fearful of them. And again, that's because like anything associated with these dead gods is really, really feared, though people still kind of want to harness that power because people are also trying to be the most powerful warrior in the area, but scared of the gods, if that makes sense. So again, this is a multi-perspective story. I'm hoping they're gonna begin to overlap, but right now they're very like distinct from each other. Our first perspective is Orca, and she is a mother, and essentially she was in her past like a very, 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 very powerful warrior. It's kind of unclear. She definitely escaped that past, and she kind of just wants to live a quiet life with her husband and her son. However, at the beginning of the story, her life is kind of thrown upside down, and she has to go on a journey to try to find and save her son. And I personally have been loving her. Her perspective. Um, I really enjoy having the layer of motherhood within a fantasy setting. I think it's a really interesting dynamic that's not often explored and her character too is just honestly she's so incredible. <laughs> like, she doesn't say much <laughs> but she is a fearsome warrior to not be trifled with. Also follow Elvar who is a young female warrior as well and she essentially left her her home, her kind of like powerful family to try to create her own battle fame and she kind of also is going on a journey with her like crew, she's part of this warrior crew to basically unlock an ancient secret. Um, so far her chapters are cool in that like there's a lot of camaraderie and I'm also just really curious about this sort of power that's associated with these dead gods which is kind of her journey to sort of uncover and unlock and I feel like we're gonna get a lot of interesting world building through her chapters um, as this series continues to expand and then lastly we have Varg and he's a runaway thrall and he essentially also joins a different war band um, to try to uncover who killed his sister and get his revenge. His chapters are surprisingly also probably the most lighthearted chapters in this book. This book is very dark. There's not a lot of lightheartedness. Don't get me wrong. But Varg is this very likable character and he's kind of like thrown in the middle of it and he's just trying to like train as a warrior and figure out what happened to his sister but they call him Varg no sense <laughs> and again seeing kind of the camaraderie between him and the people around him is also really interesting and I'm curious how I, I feel like there might be like a meeting of all these characters or meeting at least of these battle crews um because right now everyone's really really separate especially Orca who's very much on a solo journey like do not again mess with her but the book so far is just so interesting the setting is incredibly immersive just there's so much atmosphere this book has also been very thoughtfully set up like it's definitely sort of slow going in the beginning but not in like a bad way just in a really methodical way and now that I'm in the world I'm just so intrigued by everything I'm sort of encountering it's cool the viking vibes are so real but anyway, I'm going to sit down and read more. I have about 200 pages left, so I'm going to work to finish this book maybe tonight, but if not tomorrow. Just wanted to give you kind of an overall lay of the land, but so far I'm definitely liking it a lot, but it's really gruesome. Please believe me when I say that. Hello, it's me. I've read another 50 pages of this book. I'm about to start cooking dinner and watching Vincenzo with Clay. Yes, we're still watching Vincenzo. It's taking a long time. I know, I know. 20 episodes though. You know, it just, it sometimes takes time, but um, this book is, it's getting so good. It's so gruesome. I know I keep saying that, but I just read some scenes that scarred me a little bit. Um, but I'm also kind of starting to see, so as I mentioned, we have three main perspectives and they're kind of all on their own, like independent quests, I would call them. But I have a feeling they're going to possibly start intersecting and you're starting to see hints of like a larger political conspiracy at play That has to do with like the gods and the magic and like a vibe for power, which is interesting I'm just not totally sure how One they're gonna connect these two different war bands and then obviously Orca is like independent quest and journey um, But I am really looking forward to some and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. They won't connect but like I have a feeling but yeah, I've read 50 more pages. I've got 150 pages left. I'm obviously gonna read more tonight. I'm just gonna take a break for cooking dinner and the like. So it's a 
take you along for that, obviously, but I've read. I bought Clay and I matching Prospect Park shirts. <laughs> well, mine's a sweatshirt, his is a t-shirt. But anyway, I'm making dinner now and uh, I wanted some comfort food, so spam it is. I had two canisters of spam when I made spam fried rice, so this is leftover. We already have the rice on. It's happening, so I'm gonna fry this bad boy up, probably put some eggs on top, and enjoy the rest of the evening. Hello, Matilda. She's always by me whenever I'm cooking, and today I can especially understand why. <laughs> Clay and I are watching some Vincenzo. We we're almost done with episode 15, and then I'm back to reading. But I will be finished with the show eventually. Only 20 episodes, so we're getting there. <laughs> Hello, good morrow. It's me. I'm up and dressed on this Wednesday. Fully have a dress on. Um, Matilda is doing her thing, sunbathing. I am actually going to sit down and do my day planner this morning, which I will take you along with. And then I will probably do a reading update later in the day, but I did read to page 400 last night. So I'm definitely on track to finish Shadow of the Gods today and then start Rhythm of War, which I'm so, so, so excited about. But Shadow of the Gods is getting, it's getting good. It's getting really, really good. But let's organize my day, day planner time. Day planning together. One of the items on my to-do list is to deal with this pile caused by the air conditioning repair. So, you know, I'm gonna write that down right now, but let's get started because I need some structure. Mission accomplished. Now I just have to do the things I just wrote down. <laughs> the morning has just zoomed by on me and I don't have the groceries or the energy to make a lunch. So I'm gonna go pick up a salad, I think. So come along, the weather's really nice. So it's also nice to step outside for a bit because I have not, have not been outside today. So that should be a good time too. So let's go grab my lunch. Alrighty, it's time to eat these greens and read this book. Right, Jin? <laughs> Matilda thinks it's dinner time <laughs> and is trying her hardest to make it true. But I wanted to do a reading update as I'm actually about to sit down and finish The Shadow of the Gods, but I did read to page 400 last night and this book is just continuing to really escalate well. I feel like the reveals are like well plotted. Like it's not, I don't know, it's not showing its cards too soon, which I prefer in fantasy novels. Like when things feel earned, I find it much more satisfying. But uh, something I also wanted to talk about and highlight is the combat. So I've obviously said how brutal this book is, both in just how people's lives are, like day-to-day -day existence, but the combat is really, really descriptive, which can be a little gross sometimes, but how the writing, or how the combat is written too, though, is so compelling and very visual, and it's just so clear that John Huen, I think, I mean, I'm no expert, seems to have done a lot of research on how like Vikings fought. Generally speaking, every character has a multitude of different weapons from a shield to an ax to like a knife, sometimes a sword. Um, and there's a lot of different ways that they use these things. And every type of element of combat that's present in the story is just descriptive. And each like weapon that's present, like has a purpose, has a use, has a move. And it's honestly just like very cool. Like sometimes very gross, but also very cool. Like hand axes be flying left and right. Throwing axes, two handed axes. There's a lot of axes in this book, but it just makes those scenes like you can't stop reading it, you know? Um, but anyway, I'm really liking this. I love 
all of the character journeys, but I think I've already mentioned I love Orca the most. I'm just a sucker for just a mom-centered story in fantasy. She's just such a compelling character, so interesting and hard to read at the same time. So I'm like obsessed with her. Um, and yet, you know, she's not given me much, but I am, I'm invested. Um, but I'm gonna sit down and read the last 70 or so pages now, finish my first book of this vlog, and then obviously I plan to start Rhythm of War tonight. Clay and I, I think are gonna get dinner tonight. We actually have a friend visiting us. Clay has a friend visiting him. So they've been out and about doing stuff, um, and they'll continue to be doing stuff for the next couple days, whereas I just plan to read and eat. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm gonna finish this now and then it's dinner time. I have finished what a wild ride <laughs> this last like 50 pages of this book were. Wow. I will be very much anticipating the next installment of this series because this culminated in quite the explosion. But um, now I think I'm going to just get ready for the rest of the night and I'll be starting with the war later, but just wanted to let you know I finished. Fancy toast, Brooklyn vibes. And just like that, I am back home and I'm about to officially start Rhythm of War. And if you didn't know, I do read my Stormlight Archive books via ebook because those hardcover novels especially are very, very heavy and I have carpal tunnel. <laughs> So luckily my e-reader is much lighter, so I'm going to start this tonight, see how far I can get. Um, I am getting pretty sleepy, so I don't think I'll read a bunch, but I have again finished The Shadow of the Gods, which ended so well. I literally, ex I literally yelled out loud when I read the last couple of pages. It was just so good. So I'm really pumped to now start another fantastic epic fantasy story. So we're gonna do that now. Cheers, everyone. Good morning. I'm up and dressed. It's been a bit of a chaotic morning, but I've really just been sitting at my desk working, but I did want to show off that I have clothes on, not pajamas, and then I've started my Thursday. And, and I did read 75 pages of Rhythm of War last night, so I'll actually do a reading check-in right now. So when it comes to any book in the Stormlight Archive, 75 pages is truly nothing. Um, so I've really just begun this story. That being said, the end of Oathbringer was so good and so explosive as well as Dawn Shard. We got a few hints about some other developments that kind of happened between the end of Oathbringer and the start of this book. Um, and also just seeing more of Shadesmere was really, really cool. That being said though, it does appear that we're getting some new point of view characters within Rhythm of War, which I always find exciting, even if they're not super present throughout the story. Like we're always gonna get the Dalinars, the Kaladins, the Shalins, Shallan, etc. Um, but it's always nice to kind of get some new POV characters that we've seen around a lot. Like I actually really like Adelin. I didn't initially. I love him now. I've always loved Renarian and like Navani, like all these characters. I'm just always excited to kind of run across one of their chapters. Um, so yeah, 75 pages in. I'm obviously liking it right away, but there's just, um, you know, a lot of setup at the beginning of these books, which makes sense. But there is also a lot of political fallout that happened at the end of Oathbringer. I'll say within this series, Brandon Sanderson does such a great job balancing such intricate character arcs, like so emotional. You're so invested in these people's lives and stories. Like this could be a fantastic series without any like combat because the characters are just so spot on um but <laughs> great news the combat is impeccable as well just the different fighting sequences and because as we kind of move through the series the magic becomes more ever present as uh more characters are kind of learning how to harness their particular set of skills and because it's not just one type of magic there's a whole slew of different types that could be present there's always such a cool application that's like waiting to be done via Brandon Sanderson's writing. Just the magic is great and the written combat is great. Like people are literally flying around or sliding around. It's just so amazing. Um, so 75 pages, it also means I've read almost 400 pages, probably more like 360 pages um, for this vlog so far. I plan to read more this evening and obviously through tomorrow as well. But I'm really liking Rhythm of War. I'm really happy to have finally started it. 
I'm nervous just because I've heard so many people say how emotional this fourth book is, so we'll see. Update, I'm about to sneak out for lunch today, um, but I'm meeting up with Elena um, nearby and getting some coffee and a little pastry, um, and then I'll come back here and continue working, but I'm really looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to having a little, a little day trip moment, so I'll bring you guys along, but we gotta go, because I don't want to be late. Meeting up with Elena. She dragged me out of my apartment for a, a fake lunch of, of ice cream and coffee. <laughs> the Elena special. Yeah. Where did you go? You found shades. Yes, I'm always finding shades. My secret. cream social date with Elena. We had ice cream and coffee for lunch and it was delicious. It's such a beautiful day outside so I'm definitely glad I escaped for a bit but now I'm back at my uh, my desk here in my corner. I'm gonna get back to it but uh, I'm so happy that I saw Elena. It was such a nice little nice little hour out and about so. <laughs> Hi friends. It is much later. I'm in bed. I'm actually gonna do a bit of reading. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't do very many check-ins today. I had a bit of anxiety, and so I spent a lot of time just watching my signature comfort television. Before I knew it, the entire night elapsed, but I am now going to do some reading. I'm gonna read some Rhythm of War tonight, but I will be back better than ever tomorrow, do a lot more reading, a lot more vlogging. Sometimes you strike out, and that's what happened today, but all right, so I'll check you guys in the morning. Time to read some Rhythm of War and get a good night's sleep. Hello world, it's me. I'm dressed in, you know, this is this is as much of getting dressed as I'm gonna get dressed today. <laughs> um, but I've actually been super productive this morning, which I'm really jazzed about. Matilda, likewise, very productive over there. Um, I'll do a check-in in a bit. I'm actually going to make some lunch breakfast. I've just been like on an oatmeal kick. You know, sometimes when, I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate, but you know when you just like fixate a bit on a food and you're like, I won't eat this for every single meal. And I love oatmeal, which is like milk and brown sugar. I can't stop. But I think I'm going to heat some of that up now to enjoy and then also get back to work. But just wanted to say hello, good morning. I plan to vlog all throughout today and through this evening and hopefully do so much reading. I'm feeling very inspired, very productive. It's gonna be a good time. Alrighty, so as I said, it's lunchtime, but I've decided to change courses to instant ramen because, very important reason, Monica's mom gave me some of their homemade kimchi, so I wanna eat it immediately. Um, so I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm gonna eat it with some ramen right now because I I can't wait. I can't wait. It's gotta be had. Um, so I'm just gonna make a garlic QP mayo instant ramen with a side of kimchi for lunch today and watch the new Smoky Glow video because I love a commentary channel. So let's do it. Homemade radish kimchi. I cry. So good. And then my mixture of egg, cupy mayo, some garlic, and then the seasoning packet. Dump the broth in here, mix, throw the noodles in. It's so good. Plus kimchi with kind of a richer, like more like rich ramen because the mayo and the egg. Impeccable combination. The perfect lunch. Just this whole situation, perfect. <laughs> Feeling very blessed by this clay charrette delivery. 
This and bagels will be my biggest thing I miss when I leave New York. Ugh, Levain, you are my heart's one true love. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> Taking a cookie and rhythm of war break, everyone. Amazing. Hi, it's me. So I enjoyed that cookie and I've been sitting here reading and I've passed the 140 page mark of Rhythm of War, it's happening. Um, I'm really, really liking this book. So obviously given that this is the fourth book in a like almost 5,000 page fantasy series, it's definitely hard to talk about specific plot things in great detail, but there are a few items I really wanted to comment on that I'm just so far really liking. First and foremost, I feel like Brandon Sanderson has done a really great job escalating the plot. Like each book has been super intense but he's also expanded not only like the political nature of the story, the conflict itself, the amount of characters involved, the different political stakes in each book too. So like nothing feels low stakes and it just keeps getting bigger and more intense every single book, but it's just scaled really well. So you're not like one overwhelmed or like unsatisfied with the earlier conflicts. Like everything fits within the overall escalation of this plot and story. With that too, with the escalation of the overall plot and the overall issue at hand, it's just continuing to get more and more complicated not only because there's so many different moving parts and there's a bunch of alliances that are kind of at play and due to history and past conflict those alliances can be very complicated because now you could be possibly working with someone that you hated previously because you're just trying to save the entire world um but that doesn't mean you can just get over past grievances or there isn't issues that happened in the past you need can't that, that don't need to be resolved not to mention people have different routes that they would like to solve stuff so that's definitely explored like a foreign policy perspective but the overall conflict like the central conflict of the story is so anxiety inducing because it doesn't feel right but it doesn't feel like there's any other solution like it just feels terrible on all sides and just how brandon sanderson gives us a view on both sides and continues to show like how effed up war is and how effed up this conflict is and how effed up all the humans were and how effed up these other people were and like how it's just just this mass of pain and destruction and there's just no easy answer to fix any of it but gosh darn it you just want i don't know it's just so complicated and it just creates so much uh like tension when you're reading a book and then obviously you're following all of your these favorite characters from again both sides of the conflict kind of trying to interact with this this huge moral problem because saving one person could still kill another person and there's still death and destruction and did that person need to die or should they have died and you often just read a lot of perspectives of just wanting conflict in general to end and like there's no victor in war there's just this harrowing sense of sadness i guess what i'm trying to explain is like we have these heroes and they're doing the best they can but at the same time they're also villains on the flip side of the conflict and like both experiences in that scenario are valid and it's just people trying to survive and there's just evil people at play on both sides and it's just so complicated and a lot of your fave characters again on both sides are just trying their best to save the people that they love and it's just it's ripping me apart outside of that though there is something about starting like the first part of a new epic fantasy book that kind of feels like you're seeing the gang again like all your fave people even though i literally just finished oathbringer and read the novella so i haven't been separated with any of these characters it's still always fun to encounter like their first scene within the next installment um and just seeing everyone again down our kaladin shallon like <sighs> Navani, like I'm just I'm a big stan over here, but I just love the Stormlight Archives. Truly, it's just really good. Just the overall plot, conflict, escalation, how Brandon Sanderson writes magic, how he writes combat, how he writes like science in magic, I think is really cool. Because obviously with the fantasy world, you are creating laws, like how magic works and therefore how things 
interact within that new scheme of logic of whatever the magic you're producing is and he does really interesting and complicated things and like expands on it within each book and just creates new like discoveries and technology that center the magic and it just makes the whole experience rich you know like he's always bringing it to a new place um i'm gonna keep reading I've read 140 pages. I'm obviously trying to read at least 300 pages before the end of this vlog. I'm doing nothing tonight but reading, so I'm hopeful that I'll be able to succeed, but just wanted to give a, an update as I haven't since I read like 75 pages or something like that, so I'm just feeling so many things. It just gives me so much anxiety, but like in a good way, you know? It makes me like not want to put it down. You know what I mean? Sometimes life is about picking up a ginormous burrito and starting a new K-drama. I've decided to start Do My Your Service by myself. Don't tell Clay. Also ignore this. Again, Clay is a friend in town, so they preemptively set it up. No worries though, it does not impact my K-drama watching. Isn't that right, Matilda? JK, I'm kick flipping it. I forgot that my roommate is a Guamo is airing, airing now. I gotta, I gotta. I'm so excited. We're watching this, we're watching this. I've reached the face mask part of the evening. I'm halfway through the first episode of that drama start I started tonight and I have to admit it guys I love toxic immortal men too much like I'm watching it and I'm like I hate you but also I love you too <laughs> it's just I can't it's just a trope I can't get over anyway it's great so far. First episode of that drama down. I actually really, really enjoyed it. I was expecting to enjoy it just based off like the inputs of the synopsis, but I wasn't expecting it to be so like playful and kitschy. It's really like self-aware, you know, because like it's using a lot of like well-known tropes, like ridiculous situations, and it knows just how ridiculous it is, which makes it so funny like they exaggerate things and i don't know i really liked the first episode i'm for sure gonna continue on i think there's like eight episodes out at the moment but not tonight because i'm gonna get back to reading right now um and that was definitely a nice break up to rhythm of war well i wouldn't say there's like so many intense things happening in rhythm of war it's just the implication of what's to come and i'm already stressed you know what i mean but it's time to read Hi guys, it's Reagan and welcome to the end of the vlog. The next day, I just wanted quickly to pop in and wrap up everything I was able to read for this epic fantasy vlog because what a doozy. I'm also just happy I feel like I did some adventuring out of New York because I feel like it's been a minute since I've had multiple days in a row at least vlogging of me leaving my couch so that felt like a success. But obviously I started the vlog with reading the last 200 pages of The Shadow of the Gods. I really liked this book and I felt like it got better and better as I went along. I'm also just looking forward to see how this world continues to expand in the next installments as I feel like John Gwen is definitely pacing this out very, very thoughtfully. So honestly, I really don't know where it's going to go, but I feel like it's going to be gruesome. Um, and I really liked it. And then I was actually able to read about 250 pages of Rhythm of War within this vlog. So I did read just under 500 pages. As I've been kind of echoing a lot throughout this vlog, I am really enjoying the initial introduction of this fourth book. There's just too much left to experience for me to have too strong of an opinion on anything, but the introductions, the characters I've seen, I've really enjoyed again. I also feel like we're getting highlighted on some characters that have always been present but maybe didn't have a lot of POV chapters so that has been really nice so I'm looking forward to continuing to read this it's so heavy but I'll hold it up once more <laughs> but yeah that is everything I was able to read for this vlog I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you soon with another one soon goodbye